Dele Momodu, the Director of Strategic Communications of the People's Democratic Party's presidential campaign, has accused Bola Tinubu, the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, and his team of plagiarizing the 1993 manifesto of late Moshud Kashimao Olawale Abiola and mixing it with the 2015 APC Buhari manifesto. Momodu emphasized the difference between Abiola, who was a judge to have won the June 12, 1993 presidential election before it was annulled by the military administration of General Buhari, Ibrahim Babangida and Tinubu, describing the APC manifesto as an insult to the sensibility of Nigerians before accusing the authors of plagiarism. Well, joining us live to discuss this is Okewoye Sharafa. He's a legal practitioner and a member of the All Progressive Congress here in Lagos. Uh, Mr. Sharafa, it's so good to have you join us. It's my pleasure to be on the program with you. Great. Let's start by looking at the 80-page manifesto and, of course, what the priorities are. We know that it's prioritizing mostly security and the economy. But I will not start without making reference to what Dele Momodu said. And that's a hefty allegation, saying that you did not just plagiarize that of the SDP in 1993. You're merging it with something that was done in 2015 that brought in um, the president, Muhammad Buhari. So um, help us to understand why that is, if that is even anything to go by. Well, thank you very much. We must try to understand one thing, that um, OP93, that um, Chief Monsoon Kajma Olawala Abiola actually used to convert, convert for foot in Nigeria, is as relevant as 1993. We must get that right. And what is more, of course, is um, that manifesto of um, Chief MQ Abiola was actually a nationalistic manifesto that was embraced, accepted, and endorsed by all Nigerians from all walks of life. And what is more is that um, the man was never allowed to enjoy the fruit of his labor. He was never allowed. And I think it is the considered opinion of leadership of APC that as long as that 1993 is still relevant, it's important for us. Hello? We can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir that it is important for Nigerians to enjoy that failed attempt of 1993 in 2023. Truth of matter, of course, is this. That manifesto was drafted by the best brains Nigeria, that Nigeria had ever produced, including the current presidential candidate of APC, uh, Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu. You see, we must have to be student of history. Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu was a major participant in that OP93 process. So in that process, if anybody is now claiming that, well, it was taking what uh, dollar in 1993 to 2003, well, that means we are not we are not trying to actually look at the history holistically. In that document, actually, Bola Ahmed Tinobu participated in the drafting and never realized that Nigerians in 1993 were never allowed by Mr. Junta to enjoy what was contained in okay. that document. And the best thing to be done in the circumstance, of course, was to see what could be done by APC now in ensuring in, in, in ensuring that Nigerians actually enjoy that fruit of that thing. And let me say this, let me say this. Um, OP93 that APC is using now, APC said renewed OP. It means something. It means APC is not totally claiming authorship of this document. They are saying, we are renewing hope. So we should ask ourselves that what are they renewing? And that is taking us back to 1993, hope 93. It's as simple as that. So which means APC leadership and APC president candidates were equally aware that when we are going back to 1993, when we had a robust manifesto, that if it was allowed uh, to be implemented, Nigeria will not be where it is today. And unfortunately, people are thinking that that renewed hope was actually talking about President Mamadou Buhari. No, we are saying that 1993, that Nigerians are um, not minding our religion, not minding our ethnicity, voted overwhelmingly for the mandate of SCP, represented by Chief M.K. Abiola and Abbasabababadikana King Gibe. Even in Kano, 
that um, uh, Mr. Bashir Tofa, who was the NRC candidate, came from, M. K. Abela won there. So, and the thinking of APC leadership, of course, is that the time is now for us to go back to that Op 93 manifesto and see what we can do. And let me say okay. this, Nigerians and Nigerian politicians, we have this problem. Continuity is our problem. We don't believe that when the program or the process is in place, if you are coming on board, you must continue from where the um, outgoing or outgoing government stopped. So the thinking, of course, is that Op 93 of MQ Abiola, which is bye-bye to poverty, which is no to uh, unemployment, and other good things. We are saying, come, that document is there. there. Gathering dust. Let okay. us bring it to, uh, to life and okay. see what we can do to actually bring it into the current reality. And that's the okay. sense of adding okay. what we have in 2015 to that document, making it now a whole document to reflect the current reality of the world, the current All reality right. of Nigeria. All right, let me let me bring you back. I, I like I like I, that you've said I, a mouthful, like but let, let, let's backtrack a bit. You, you told me about the fact that because your presidential candidate was part of some of the crafters of the manifesto in 1993. There's nothing wrong with doing it again in 2022. You're also trying to tell me in the same verse that maybe the APC uh, is bereft of ideas or creativity, and so they're not even making any efforts to try to incorporate the problems of Nigeria today, which is 2022, as opposed to what happened in 1993. Are there similar things? Yes, maybe. But... I mean, I'm just wondering, because you're telling me right now that it's okay, yes, we brought it because, and then if this is anything to go by, in 2015, your candidate brought us a presidential candidate who has been in power for almost eight years. What has he been able to do in that renewed hope that you made reference to that we can say today as Nigerians that we have our hopes renewed? Again, I'm curious because your candidate has told the whole world that he was going to build on the gains of President Buhari. What are those gains? Educate us, please. That's Mr. Sheriff, are you that. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Go PC ahead. is not is bereft of idea. That is not correct. Okay. Now, what we are saying is this. We are saying that what was contained in OP 93 is still relevant today. OP 93 is talking about elevation of poverty. It's talking about um, employment opportunities. Is talking about secure environments. Uh, it was talking about uh, ensuring that people are, are placed where they rightfully belong. That is the essence of Open 93. And I think that uh, the narrative has not actually changed. Today, as we speak, we are battling with issue of security. Today, we are battling with issue of economy. We are battling with issue of employment, and so on and so forth. And the APC leadership realized that clearly that manifesto of 1993 is as relevant as ever. And we mustn't try to run away from the fact that Nigeria in the last 20, uh, in the last 30 years, we have actually been rigmaroling. We have not actually tried to actually get it right. Yes, when the current government came on board in 2015, we had a manifesto, which it was for our point agenda. We talk about security, we talk about education, we talk about employment, and we talk about um, uh, ensuring a, a stability of our nation. Yes, I, I tell you, if, if, if you look at the reality of what the current government had experienced in the last several years, you agree that the government had actually tried, compared to previous government. Well, you see, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm yet to understand where they have tried, because you keep telling me... That the government has tried. The government has tried. Where have they tried? In what areas have they tried? Before, are you with me? Yes. Yes. Before uh, the current government came on board in 2015, most part of the Northeast were under the full control of Boko Haram elements. That fact is there. But when this government came on board, we, the government was able to liberate all the local government and the state in the Northeast. And they were able to uh, suppress and even send uh, the Boko Haram element out and outside the country. We only have pocket of strikes, but we must understand one thing: the issue of insecurity is a global problem. There have been challenges world over, and Nigeria is actually experiencing the spillover of what is happening in other nations. Mm. And I tell you, the current government of APC in Nigeria 
has done well to ensure that Nigeria remains one, to ensure that everybody can actually go uh, to AKA living. Well, we have a pocket of um, a crisis there and there. I like mentioned Edsman and so on. I agree with you. But you see, you must understand, or we must understand that this thing doesn't start in a day. It's, uh, it has been on for quite a while. And the government has been able to curtail this to some extent. And what is just there, of course, is our people need to just uh, encourage government, just to support government, just to give government ideas on how to tackle this. Because when government uh, agencies, particularly security agencies, are actually uh, rooting the, the criminals, uh, Nigerian press are not actually celebrating this. But when the, um, the, the, the militants, the militias, you know, they, they not, I mean, strike, a guerrilla-like strike now, it, it will be blown out of proportion. That's the problem we are having. I tell you, the government has tried to ensure that the issue of insecurity is brought to, it, to, 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 to its needs. And what the government needs, of course, is, well, um, the current government is, is winding up. And that is where the Renew Hope 2023 comes into play. And we have been um, uh, informed to that document that all the loopholes will be blocked to ensure that um, the issue of insecurity is brought to an end okay. uh, as soon as Okay, quickly, I just want to push in something that you said earlier on before we wrap things up. You talked about the fact that the APC um, actually have, uh, are actually trying to get it right. And this is the seventh year. We're about to hand over, your, the APC is about to hand over to another government, whichever government will emerge in 2023. Why has the narrative not changed? Because you also talked about the fact that the narrative hasn't changed since um, 1993 and then, of course, in 2015. And here we are in 2022. If the narrative hasn't changed, does that not show failure on the part of the APC-led administration? Because if you come into power telling us that you want to change things for Nigerians, that's the change mantra that the APC came in with. And instead of things changing from bad to good, it seems like we're spiraling down into worse. Does that not show that the APC has failed? Again, I ask, what is your candidate building on? Why should anybody vote for him in the first instance? And lastly, he spoke about the fact that um, he's going to deal with the economy. I did have a guest yesterday from the PDP who said that your manifesto seems like a horror movie. And the only part of it that seems to be walkable uh, is where he talks about, I think, taxation. So please help us understand why any Nigerian should vote for your candidate in closing. Thank you very much. Now, the, the thinking of APC leadership, of course, is this. In 2015, when the current government came on board, uh, the, the, the world was facing a lot of challenges. And up to 2020, the whole world was facing that challenges. And we need to give it to President Mamadou Buhari for being able to sustain this country, for being able to ensure that this country is one, or to ensure that uh, militants, uh, hoodlums, uh, fundamentalists didn't take over this country. Must give that to him. And that's what his infrastructure, he tried his best. Now, what I'm saying, I've never said this government, are doing government fail. I'm not I'm saying that in the last 20 years, the current democratic experimentation we are having, we have had one challenge or the other. And if the previous government, before 2015, had actually laid a very solid foundation, economically, politically, socially, infrastructure-wise, we might not be in this mess. But this government that actually laid that foundation in which Ashwari Bala Metinu is going to build on, and that's what it's called renewed hope. We already have hope in President Mamadou Buhari, but it's coming to, 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 have, to give us a renewed hope. And I tell you one thing, everything, I mean, the President Mamadou Buhari has laid the foundation now. What remains, of course, for the incoming government is to ensure that he built, I mean, he built on that, uh, that, that foundation, and which actually okay. Parliament is going to do. And I tell you this, he's a man that has been tested. He's a man that is experienced. He's a man that is trusted. Okay. And he has more occupied an executive position before. He understands the nitty-gritty of an executive position and the worst of an executive position. Until okay. date, Lagos is still a road model in Nigeria. Okay. Because this is a man who has and we're enjoying the outcome of his labor in Lagos. And we want to replicate the same thing in Nigeria to ensure okay. that we have a sustained 
economic development, sustain growth, and to ensure that Nigeria uh, 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 return to its uh, rightful uh, place in the Committee okay. of Nations. That is the essence of this uh, renewed hope 2023 of, I mean, actually, All right. Well, um, okay, well, Sharafa is a legal practitioner and a member of the All Progressive Congress here in Lagos State. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming. Well, that's it tonight on the show. We will be back tomorrow again talking for development. Don't forget, if you have not collected your PVC, it's ready. If you registered for your PVC at the beginning of this year, your PVC is ready. But if you did in the middle of the year, your PVC will be ready next month. But make sure that you pick up your PVC at the closest INEC office to where you registered. My name is Mary Anna. Come to you tomorrow as we talk for development. <laughs>